Hello everybody, my name is Pariston Banks from Loving Social Media and today with me I have uh, the illustrious, prestigious, the great, magnificent and every other word synonymous with what I'm saying right now, Dr. Mark Hughes, how are you sir? Pariston, nice to hear from you, nice to see you, yeah I'm doing really well, thank you. So to kick things off, I would first like to, you know, for those that are unaware of, you know, of who you are and what you do. Um, who are you, Mark? So I am, I guess the simplest way to describe who I am is I'm a dentist, um, but I'm a dentist who has pretty much focused my entire career on cosmetic and what we call restorative dentistry. And what that means is transforming the way people look, but also transforming the way people chew and function and how they, you know, how their oral health is. So I, I do a lot of cosmetic transformations, but I also do a lot of transformations for people that are in a pretty bad way dentally. So there are, you know, there's a difference between cosmetic, restorative, and other forms of subjects in the, uh, in the dentist world, correct? Yes, that's right. So, I mean, most people will know their general dentist, who's somebody who they might go for fillings, um, and who might have, they might have their teeth cleaned, or they might have the odd tooth taken out. Um, that is generally what we call dentistry that's done tooth by tooth. But the kind of dentistry that I do is, is more transformative. Um, and it generally, uh, people seek me out generally if, if they're really, really unhappy with the way their smile looks or they're really unhappy or concerned with how their mouth is functioning. And, and that could be because they've lost lots of teeth or they've worn their teeth really badly. Um, so it generally tends to be um, thinking about transforming the mouth in a more comprehensive way, thinking about all their teeth, thinking about how they chew, how they bite, and how they smile all at once. Understood. Understood. So my very first question would be, so you've been in the dentist industry for over 30 years now. Um, to be in any type of industry for any amount of time is, is incredible, but for 30 years in the dentist industry is actually unfathomable. So could you tell us about what inspired you to be a dentist? And then my second question following that would be what inspires you to persist this career path? Well, I guess when I was a, a young man and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do after school, um, my aptitudes and my interests were always towards the sciences, but particularly the biological sciences. Um, and so for me at the time, it was a trade-off between becoming a doctor or becoming a, a, a dental doctor, becoming a dentist. But I also really like to work with my hands. Um, I, I felt that medicine maybe wasn't going to be as creative as dentistry. And, and I also like the fact that in dentistry, you're kind of your own guy. Once you set up and practice, you're independent for most of your career and you can, you can build a business. So there were many aspects about being a dentist that I was interested in and inspired by, both from the medical side, the creative side, the business side. Um, so all of those things um, encouraged me to make that decision and it was the right decision for me actually. And then the second question is what inspires me now? So I guess very early on I had a, I had a mentor, I had a teacher who showed me what you could do uh, in dentistry. In other words, you could take somebody who's, who's had a very badly broken tooth or a very damaged dentition and you could really transform how they looked. So that really inspired me and so I pursued uh, further education. I went to the States, so I spent a lot of time studying in America. I did postgraduate training here in London. Um, and I've been traveling backwards and forwards to the United States for 20 years to go to conferences and meetings just to further my, my knowledge of dentistry and the things that could be done. What really inspires me now are two things. One is how transformative the dentistry is that I do can be for people. So it literally can change lives um, and improve people's confidence to the nth degree so that's incredibly powerful and it's an incredible privilege to be able to do that for somebody um, and the second thing is as i've got further into my career i really am inspired by teaching and helping younger dentists uh, guide their pathway through their career um, to help them not make the mistakes that i made or made the poor decisions that i made at some points in my career and so teaching and mentoring is a significant inspiration for me now too Amazing answer, actually. I was unaware that you was uh, such a uh, prolific scholar into the, into the, into the dentist world. Because <laughs> I would, I wouldn't go scholarly. But... <laughs> oh, no, but at the same time, you have to understand that in its uh, pure essence of it, dentistry is a science. It concerns itself with the biology of the human body 
and the things that go on into that nature so and then you talk about how you have you transitioned from someone who just started out the 30 years prior and now you're teaching others so my question into this type of sort of scholastic achievements for your students is how important is it to push the idea of science to those that uh, aspire to be dentists so it's not just about teeth it's more so about what you know can corrode the teeth it can be more about how um you know certain uh, uh affections and you know uh, mental affections can cause uh you know bad hygienic health care that's that's a really good question um and in fact the fact that you've raised all of these multifaceted things that that not only go into some of these dental health uh, their general health but if you think about it if you think about sort of mental effects physical effects um, biological effects um, the things that we do the things that we the people we interact with and our whole lives all of those things can be seen in the mouth believe it or not there was an old very very old-fashioned saying I think maybe even the Greeks or maybe even the Egyptians came up with it was that the mouth if you looked at the mouth that it was the mirror of the body that it manifested or it showed you things that were going on in the rest of the body and so dentistry primarily is a medical science um, and you know you you can see signs of stress on somebody's teeth you can see signs of poor diet on somebody's teeth you can see signs of ill health like diabetes or heart disease mm-hmm. in the gums and on the teeth and vice versa that you know unhealthy mouths contribute to and are linked to things like diabetes and heart disease premature birth um, and strokes and all of these kind of other uh, health issues that we have especially when we get older so when you when you meet a person when I when I meet a patient I want to know as much about them as a person as I can uh, as much as about their lifestyle their background their work uh, what they eat what they do for fun what they do for you know to relax because it's a whole person that makes up the you know that what affects the mouth and and it's really important to understand our patients and get to know them well to not only know how to help them but also to know the reasons why they may be in the situation that they're in and also to to come up with a plan that's appropriate for them because in dentistry there are so many different ways we can help people and many ways we can fix teeth so it's science and it's uh, interaction on a human level that's uh, that's really really important it's really crucial and that's what I try to teach as well um, there's a very famous dentist in America who's long passed away called dr. Panky and dr. Panky's favorite phrase was I never saw a tooth walk into my office he was talking about how we treated people not teeth it definitely does highlight the fact that dentists need to be beyond themselves it needs to be beyond the individualistic manner of this is what I do how I can do it how well I can do it and as you just perfectly expressed it's making your patients feel comfortable building that relationship having those strong interpersonal skills because without it you know you are operating you know in their mouth you know so to speak there needs to be that level of comfortability and with that comfortability comes a greater understanding of what you're working with so it's very important to mesh those two worlds together you cannot have the science and the social aspect of it uh, this uh, disjointed uh, that's completely correct and in fact one, one might go as far as to say that you should never treat a patient till you actually really know them and you know enough about them um, you know we're not treating blocks of enamel we're looking after people and and it is one of the most invasive things that somebody can do is to actually access your mouth so you know that's a huge honor to be able to be invited to do that by somebody and, and we have to respect that and And, and respect that enormous trust but that enormous trust sometimes takes a while to build and and uh, yeah it's a, it's it's a wonderful relationship um, but it must be a very carefully managed relationship at the same time of course, of course. and so to take us back to your long experience 30 plus years being in dentist industry you've seen how the biology of dentistry has evolved but at the same time it's given you the first time perspective to see how technology has also evolved how you went from CT scan your back from um, in the old ages where you would have uh, the witch doctors going to the people's mouths you know with just the you know, the dirty tools and you know it, it essentially like, infect them more with plagues and diseases as as you know, as a dentist who's been in the industry for such a long time the evolution of technology how has that had a how has that had an, an effect on your skill and your perception of the dentist world 
So the technical, the technological advances in dentistry, especially in the last, I would say the last 15 years have been well, exponentially increasing. And the gift that that technology gives us is that we're better able to examine, diagnose, plan and treat and maintain our patients. So everything from, you know, when I first qualified, if you wanted to take a photograph of somebody's smile or somebody's teeth, we had to use cameras that had to develop slide film. So you would never, you, you couldn't even see the image immediately after you took the photograph. And then very quickly into my career, digital technology came along and photography and, and the use of photography to help demonstrate and educate things to patients, incredibly powerful. And we've now got digital scanning, which means that you could take a, a 3D mold of the mouth without having to put that old fashioned stuff, that impression material in. That allows me to communicate to our laboratories and to other specialists via the cloud, and via software platforms. So the overall care of the patient, uh, the predictability of our treatment, the success of our treatment, and, and I think really importantly, the patient's involvement in the planning of the treatment, it's just nothing like when I qualified. It's almost like looking into the dark ages when I look back at the, you know, when I qualified compared to what technology can do now. And it's incredible. Mm. So then would you say that it is important for dentists to have lived throughout that cycle? Because I'm, I'm very much aware that in this day and age, some people are actually averse to the evolution of technology and they're, you know, averse to uh, adapting and molding towards the new ways and they want to keep it this is what worked back in 1980s or 1990s and you know, if it worked back then it should work now um do you believe that it is important for people to adapt to the change because it isn't just you know uh, their own sense of uh, identity and uh, uh ideology in terms of how they proceed as a dentist but how they proceed with other people their colleagues their patients as well do you believe that it is important for them to uh, uh, cast aside that I don't want to say almost old way of thinking to be more embracing of the new generation yes I, I think the advances in technology and, and all healthcare um, have been so beneficial I mean I, I can't even think of something that's been an advancement that really has a negative impact on our ability to care for somebody or to treat them um, so yeah it's incredibly important to embrace technology I think what, what I would find in the profession is that the people that are less likely to embrace technology um, are of an older generation, so maybe even of my generation. Um, but equally so, there are plenty of people like me or my generation that have embraced it wholly. Um, younger generation, they find technology easier to adapt to because they've grown up with it. But I think I don't think you can progress in a medical career these days, and certainly not in dentistry, to a very, very high level. Um, without embracing the technology and it's there it's available it's become um, I wouldn't say cheap but it's become more cost effective to invest in these kind of technologies and uh, why not why not uh, provide the best for you and for your patients and, and for their treatment so I wholeheartedly uh, back the advancements in technology of course, of course. well for my final question today out of all of your cases you've had throughout the long experience which case would you say challenged you the absolute most? <laughs> I've, I've got two answers. So it's it's always challenging when you treat friends and family because you have a you have a different kind of relationship with them than just the patient doctor relationship. Um, so I guess treating my family in particular, I I, I I treat my wife and my father, and they and you know. If you're living with the person or you see that person um, all the time, then you know it's got to be it's got to be extra special. Um, so, um, so I think it's challenging when you treat friends and family. Um, but I think if I just looked at my sort of broader uh, patient base, then there are certainly a few that come to mind that um, their transformations have been so so life changing um, that. I've become very good friends with them. Um, they've not only been patients, or they started as patients, but going through that journey and seeing what it has been, has it has done to benefit them, both in terms of their ability to enjoy their life. Because you know, remember, we all like to eat and drink. We all like to go out and see our friends and smile and have fun and dance. 
if you don't have teeth, that becomes particularly challenging. And if you can't chew your food well, you can't enjoy your food. You know, what's the point of going to the Michelin starred restaurant or to your favorite Nando's or or whatever it may be? So um, the transformation and the confidence that it gives somebody who comes from a really bad way to then you know, give them a new lease of life. I have several patients in mind that I, I would put at the top, my top five, that um, where that transformation has been spectacular. And, and as I said, many of them have become lifelong friends of mine. Mark, I could talk to you all day, especially coming from someone who is on the younger side of, you know, understanding the, 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 the dentist world, understanding that, that that generational knowledge is, I believe, very important to create a, a greater comprehension between what we know and what you know and there's knowledge to be shared from my end and your end so thank you very much thank you very much very welcome um once again my name is harrison banks from women social media this is dr mark hughes he is everywhere he is on instagram facebook linkedin dr mark hughes go ahead and follow him dr mark hughes thank you again you're welcome Harrison. thank you bye bye